Mike D'Antoni spent two miserable stints with team with teams with which I've had an up close and personal relationship. Look, I was born into the purgatory of being a Knicks fan, and D'Antoni was a disaster with the Knicks. Yes, Linsanity phenomenon, that phenomenon was his, but it was cut short by the return of Carmelo Anthony from injury. I was on the radio in Los Angeles for more than five years when D'Antoni was horrible with the Lakers. Called him Mike Antoni, no D, and not many W's. I used to kill him every day for hours at a time. But Mike D'Antoni has been redeemed, and in his redemption can be seen how and why he failed when he failed. Where D'Antoni looked helpless, he had Mello in New York and Kobe in L.A. Neither guy was ever known for an up-tempo early offense. In the light most favorable to them, they are two of the great ISO scorers in league history. In a different light, they're ball stoppers. And Mike D'Antoni simply could not get them to buy in to his freewheeling, shoot-first-play-defense-never style. That was a failure of his and of the front offices that hired him. He couldn't get superstars to change their games for him, owing mainly to the mismatching of coach and primary talent. What else does D'Antoni's resume include? A stellar run in Phoenix, a flash of brilliance in New York, and his, in his current perch on the brink of the Western Conference Finals with Houston. And what can we say about all these successes? That Mike D'Antoni, like a lot of other people of vision in professional life, needs a willing partner, like Steve Nash or Jeremy Lin, or lately James Harden, a leader who buys in. And in every instance, when matched with a point guard as muse for his picture of efficient offensive basketball, Mike D'Antoni is redeemed. So give him coach of the year. He deserves it. And give Daryl Morey executive of the year for seeing what a D'Antoni-Harden pairing could be. Still no D, but he got the PG and maybe enough W's to get to the Western Conference Finals.